I got a new guitar. Check this thing out. This is the new Cordoba Stage. It is a solid body, nylon string, electric guitar. How cool is that? This is a really rare design. Hardly anyone makes guitars like this. Cordoba just released this within the past month. Before that, the only companies I know of that made something similar are Godin and apparently Ibanez. I don't know of any others. I will say though, I think there's going to be an increased demand for guitars like this. Within the next few years, we'll probably start seeing more electric nylons coming from the household name guitar makers. There's been a bit of a stir online following some recent releases by the prog band Polyphia, such as their song Playing God, where they can be seen in the music video playing electric nylon string guitars made by Ibanez. But Ibanez doesn't currently mass market these things, so they were probably custom made for the guys in Polyphia. That might change. We'll probably see a new Tim Henson signature guitar coming out soon. But let me tell you, I have been wanting a guitar like this for years. There just haven't been any options out there that I could get excited about. And the other night I was scrolling through Instagram and a reel popped up of Charlie Robbins playing one of these. And I was like, what is this guitar? I have to know. I look in the description, he says it's the new Cordoba stage. As soon as I saw Cordoba, I knew I had to get one. I've been saying for years that Cordoba makes the best mass produced nylon string guitars around. I've owned a C10 since I was a sophomore in college. It's an incredible guitar. Almost everything they make sounds like it's worth twice what it retails for. So yeah, you could say I trust the brand. So the next day, my wife and I hit up Guitar Center. We found one and I sat in the store playing it through this little Fishman acoustic amp for like an hour. And as we all know, if you catch yourself playing a guitar at the shop for that long, you have to buy it, right? So I did. My wife chipped in on it as a birthday present. She is the best. So here it is, and I thought I would share my thoughts on it. This is not a sponsored video, of course. I did go out and buy this. Cordoba is not paying me to say anything here. I wish I could say they were. So these are my honest thoughts. First, what are the specs? It has a solid, fully chambered mahogany body, which keeps it fairly light and helps resonance. The top is solid spruce with a flamed maple veneer. Spruce is a standard top wood on a regular classical guitar but it has sort of a bland, basic look, so I see why they veneered it with the flamed maple. Side note, I learned pretty recently that maple trees don't just do this. It's somewhat of a rare occurrence. The neck is a sort of fusion design. It's designed to be a sort of middle ground somewhere between a nylon and steel string neck. It's got a 650 millimeter scale length, which is standard for a classical guitar, 48 millimeter nut, a little bit narrower than a traditional classical nut. The fretboard has a 16 inch radius. A typical classical will have no radius. It will be flat all the way across. It has a pretty thin C-shaped neck. The neck wood is mahogany. The fingerboard is pow ferro. The truss rod cover is an unfinished rosewood, which looks pretty cool. I'm not sure why it has a truss rod, to be honest. Nylon string guitars don't really need them. It has a good sized cutaway. It has 22 frets, which is cool. Classicals will usually have 19, sometimes with a 20th fret extension. The headstock is pretty much standard for nylon strings. Whoever strung this up did it kind of weird though. Gold strap buttons and jack cover. Looks really nice. And then the electronics. Cordoba developed this pickup system with Fishman. There's a piezo under the saddle. And there's also, I think, two mics inside the chambering to pick up the body's resonance. There's one right there and right there. This pot controls your volume. This one is tone for just the piezo pickup. And the third one is a blend knob for the body sensors. If you turn it all the way off, you only get the sound of the piezo. If you turn it up, blends in the body sensors. That's the gist. Oh, and it takes a nine volt. All right, what do I think of it? Well, obviously I like it a lot because I did buy it, but it feels very good to play. It mostly feels and responds like a classical, but it has just enough crossover into electric guitar construction to make it accessible to players coming from a variety of backgrounds without detracting from what it's supposed to be. It's light too. It weighs maybe five pounds. The construction is good. 
it doesn't feel cheap to me. If I were to change anything about the neck, I might put bigger frets on it. I don't find the frets to be too small, but the bigger the better. The body is a good thickness. The shape is ergonomic enough. It sits in the lap comfortably. Now the big question is, how does it sound? That's how it sounds plugged straight into my interface. No EQ, just a touch of reverb added. I like this combination pickup system they've built in. Being able to blend the sound of the body's resonance gives you so much more dimension than the piezo alone. Piezo pickups are good for capturing acoustic tone, but they can be sort of thin sounding and they pick up a lot of attack. The body sensors really let you round out the sound. Right now I have it with the volume all the way up, the piezo tone all the way down, and the body blend at maybe like two, three o'clock. Here's if I turn the tone up all the way. Body off. Body all the way up. Definitely boomier. Hey, so I'm here a couple days later. I'm in the middle of editing this video, but I just want to interject right here and add something. That little recorded example I played earlier was one of the first times I tracked this guitar through a DI. I think the sound of the guitar itself was skewing my perception of the signal when I was monitoring. It projects quite a bit on its own, so I thought I'd pop in from the future here and show you just how loud this thing is completely unplugged. There you go. Sorry to interrupt. I've plugged into a few different things, and I find myself changing the EQ and blend settings depending on what I'm running it through. It's like a good tone insurance policy. So far, I've tried my Quilter 101 through my Blackstar 212, this Behringer Ultra Acoustic, straight into my interface, and whatever Fishman acoustic amp I plugged into at Guitar Center. Honestly, that Fishman sounded the best. I do think a lot of it was the room, though. So far, I've found that a proper acoustic amp yields the most pleasing tone. Coming into a guitar like this, you really can't expect it to be a perfect stand-in for a true acoustic instrument, of course. It really is its own unique thing. It is an electric guitar with nylon strings. So what do you do with such an instrument? Learn that one Polyphia song? I wanted it for a few reasons. For one, I'm very attached to my classical fingerstyle technique. I consider it a staple of my voice. But I like using effects and things, and I don't like the impracticality of having to stick a really hot mic in front of my guitar to be heard in a noisy room. I can play like my Explorer with my fingerstyle technique, and it sounds good, but something about the steel strings with fingernails lacks the punch and definition you get from nylon. This is like the perfect middle ground for me. The music I want to make involves an instrument like this in a band setting. And now it exists at a fairly affordable price too. What a time to be alive. And because it's an electric guitar, I can easily run it through pedals or whatever amps. Speaking of which, let's see how it takes pedals. I'm gonna mic up my quilter for this. First up, some overdrive. <laughs> sounds okay. Definitely unique, but not bad, I don't think. What about distortion? That sounds terrible in a fantastic way. Compression? I don't 
don't know about that. That's a lot better. Chorus. Wow, that sounds awesome. Delay and reverb should sound fine. And then some weirdness. Okay, that's enough of that. Yeah, so there's potential there. I'd probably mostly steer away from the dirt boxes, except for special cases. All right, I think that's all I have to say about it. I love it. It's definitely going to be making frequent appearances in future videos. Cordoba, you done good. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't expect me to start doing gear reviews, though. If you've been considering checking out one of these guitars, I would recommend it. It is pretty unique, definitely not for everybody. In case you missed it, I am looking to fill several slots in my private Zoom student roster. I work with people to elevate their music making, be it through studying theory, improvisation, composition, technique, and so on. If you're interested, you can learn more on my website or just message me directly. I also have some of my original exercise books available in my store. Purchasing these are a great way to add some intention and organization to your practice, and also support the creation of future videos. That's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.